One of the things that we've heard a lot about with um, for Namjoon Pike is this idea he was a citizen of the world. He grew up in Korea, he studied in Japan, he worked in Germany, then he moved to New York and then he travelled around. Um, but I'm really interested in your experience, Suk, in terms of um, being in South Korea, being a young person in 1984 and watching that TV programme and that sense of resonance and I wonder if there's a very particular um, resonance for you growing up in the same place that he grew up and, and whether or not there's a very particular kind of South Korean element to this that perhaps we, uh, not having that experience, would notice. I think there's definitely that um, cultural background which really permeates all his practice, at, I mean, at some point. Um, Obviously, he was already 18 when he left Korea. Uh, it was the Korean War which made him to flee, and quite a difficult time. I mean, 18-year-old boy, <coughs> when you think about that sort of thing, um, he's already sort of, he was already aware of all this avant-garde music. He was interested in Arnold Schoenberg already, and at that time, he was very much looking out to the West and the avant-garde things happening in the West. Korea was a very small country with not, not much communication <coughs> to other side of the world. And he had this, it seems that he had this desire to really uh, understand the mainstream thing happening in the world. He wasn't really looking as just a Korean kind of thing, but he really wanted to understand and be involved in this mainstream thing. And in some ways, um, that sort of later change changed a bit to the other direction. I think he looked back to his sort of cultural heritage when he um, sort of meets John Cage. Zen Buddhism was obviously something he understood very, very well. It's just something you understand like Christianity to the Western sort of European people. You don't have to really learn it, but you understand basic principles and basic element about that particular religion. Not quite as a religion, but probably as a philosophy and the way of life. And other things like uh, when he meets like Josep Boys, for instance, then he, he sort of shares this really interesting idea about the Siberian shaman sort of traditions. And they both sort of look, look at this very um, unusual, non-European kind of tradition. Um, from quite di different sort of perspectives. So there was definitely, um, probably through his artistic development and practice, he later probably developed more interest about his own background. And I think that sort of uh, applies to me as well. I'm, I'm sort of now thinking from um, British perspective, I, I'm thinking about our audience and what would people would sort of know or expect. And still I understand what his probably original intention might have been. And I could sort of offer or add another level about the understanding of, uh, of his art. Mm -hmm.